hey guys, welcome. This is Lyndon back with another episode from Visionary Universe. So some of you may know I've been making some pretty cool tutorials for ActionVFX.com. So since I haven't been posting as much here on Visionary Universe, you guys be sure to stay in touch with ActionVFX.com so you can still be watching and learning from my videos and tutorials. Uh, but the reason why I mentioned that is because we did this atmospheric fog tutorial and it turned out really cool. But I never explained how we did the light rays and that was one of the most visually interesting parts about the scene. So today I'll be showing you guys an awesome way to create real 3D light rays and this is so amazing and it's pretty easy. Uh, but as excited as you guys may be and everything, it's probably a good idea to pause this and go watch the other video over at actionvfx.com. Uh, so you won't be lost because I'm going to skip over a lot of the details for efficiency and time's sake so you guys can be as interested and excited as possible. Uh, so link to the atmosphere uh, fog tutorial in the description. Go ahead and watch as much of that video as you need to. So I'm going to wait for like three seconds for you to... Oh, actually no, watching numbers is pretty boring so let's go ahead and start. Alright, so hopefully you've watched a little bit of that other tutorial so you kind of know where we're at. We've done a 3D track and we've also made different mats and everything. It's all explained in the other tutorial and this is necessary for creating these realistic volumetric light rays. So the first thing you guys may be thinking about how we created this effect is with CC Radial Fast Blur. Now while that effect is pretty cool for creating um, kind of dynamic or interactive light rays, um, it's not the kind of path we want to take to create these large volumetric light rays you might see in a forest or something like that. They're not very dynamic, there's not much interfering except just static trees. And so the way, the technique we're going to go over is much better than like CC radio fast player for scenes like these because it's just a much larger volumetric static structure and this is the way we want these volumetric light rays to be. So this is a really cool technique. Let's go ahead and get started. So, like I said, we have this 3D camera track, and and this is really necessary for this scene because these are going to be real 3D light rays, so we have to create a camera. Okay, so we have this 3D camera, and any layer that's 3D will be subject to uh, the motion of this camera. Looks good. So, what we're going to do now is go ahead and create a new solid, so we hit Control y it's a good, good shortcut, and we'll call this light ray. Now, for the dimensions of this layer, we'll do about 4,000 by 800 something like that so it's kind of a really wide layer and this is going to be a light ray okay so the first thing we'll apply is fractal noise and maybe you can kind of get where we're going with this but if not just go ahead and follow along we're going to go to the transform settings uncheck uniform scale and just really turn up the width so we're going to turn this up to like 10,000 so aha maybe you see where we're going now so what we're going to do at this point, since it doesn't really look like a light ray because of these sharp edges, what we're going to do is double click on the rectangular mask tool and we're going to do something I like to do pretty often, it's pretty cool. We're going to turn the mask expansion down to about 200 or so and then turn the feather up to about 200 as well. There we go, we've got this pretty nice light ray so far. Now, as you know, as the light ray disperses throughout the atmosphere, it's going to die out because it hits these you know, fog or debris in the air and it dies out as it um, goes away from the source. So what we're going to do is um, do a linear white. We'll apply this to the solid. And uh, we'll do the transition completion about 50%. And since the layer width was about 4,000, we're going to add about 4,000 pixels of feather. So it just kind of fades out. And we need to actually rotate this around so it fades out in this direction. So maybe that makes sense. I might need to scale this down so you, can guys, so you guys can get a little better picture about what's going on. So apparently I didn't understand the way this works properly. We need to do 2,000 pixels of feather because... Uh, apparently this feather means uh, pixels in each direction so if I put a value of 4,000 here it actually does 4,000 in each direction so it's 8,000 pixels of feather so just do 2,000 so there's 4,000 all together if we want to we can do like 2,500 and turn this up to about um, 60 yeah whatever it doesn't really matter so we've got this pretty cool light ray so far but it's too uh, thick I guess you could say so we'll turn down the brightness to maybe minus 30 that looks pretty cool. Let's turn the complexity down to about 5. Now, something's going on here. See, we need to turn the blending mode of this fractal noise to none so it won't leave. Um, it can blend with the transparency better. Alright, because there's actually really transparency here. And we need to turn this blending mode of the fractal noise to none. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Now, let's just mess with the contrast. Yeah. 
Okay, so th that's looking pretty good there. There's just a little light ray. And what I want to do is go to the anchor point and set the anchor point to zero so that anchor points at the beginning of this light ray and, and since it's feathered out a little bit here at the beginning let's just move it over like this yeah so the anchor points at the beginning of the light ray looks pretty cool so let's go ahead and turn off the solo button here and uh, we'll do a screen blending mode there we go and uh, I'll make this a three-dimensional layer alright so so since we have a camera it just goes off to the side here um, just because of the orientation of the camera and uh, this light ray will automatically follow the motion of the scene because of the camera. All right. But the problem is it's not in the right spot in 3D space. So let's click on our footage, select the camera tracker, and we'll just move forward in time. I want the light ray to be kind of coming from this place in 3D space. So I'll just select a n number of points here, right click and do create null. Okay. So this null is really, really far away, and that just happens to do with the way the um, 3D tracker solved for the camera. But that's okay. I mean, it's not like it's going to reduce quality or anything. Just really big values. I mean, if someone has like OCD, it might be annoying or something, but it's not really going to mess up the quality of our scene. So what we'll do is copy the position of this null object, hit Control C, and we'll paste this on the light ray. So hit Control V. So this light ray is like super far away. You can look how big this number is. It's really far away, so we just need to scale it up a lot. Like I said, it's kind of annoying, but you know, it's okay. So we've scaled it up huge, 5,000, but it's still too small. Let's do about um, 30,000. So now we can orient this correctly. Alright, so let's make it kind of orient towards the camera, and maybe we'll make it a little bit smaller. So I, get, I think you guys can kind of see what we're doing so far. We got some a pretty cool light ray so far really cool and what we're gonna do is just make a whole bunch of duplications of this um, to just kind of fill the environment now before we duplicate we want to make sure we have all the settings just like we want it and um, one thing I do want to do is add a little bit of evolution so we'll do time times 15 not pretty subtle animation there and I just add an expression hold alternate click the stopwatch to add an expression here and uh, as we as we duplicate these light rays I want I want them to be random the shape of them to be random so what I'll do is do plus wiggle and I don't want this to wiggle like uh, wiggle quickly I just want the value to be different for each duplication of this light ray layer maybe this will make sense so what I'm gonna do is like do 0 0.0001 for the frequency so it's like not wiggling at all but for the amplitude I'll do like 200 so basically each time I duplicate this, this wiggle value will be different and it's just going to set a different value for the evolution so it's just going to change the randomness of the light ray. So check this out, I'll duplicate and each time I duplicate the light ray is going to become different so they, you know, we won't have two of the same light rays just because of this wiggle expression. So hopefully you guys understand what's going on, um, you just have to understand what this wiggle expression does. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and continue on. So let's go ahead and position this correctly, so maybe something like there and let's mess with the brightness. So it looks just right. Okay. There's the contrast there. Yeah, so there's our light ray. Really cool. Now let's go ahead and make our first duplication of this. And we'll just move it around. Try to find the most open spots in the woods that you would you could imagine a light ray coming through. Yeah, something like that. And let's move forward in time a little. Yeah, just perfect. Just like that. Awesome. This is all oh, this is looking so awesome. <laughs> we got the expression here, everything's just changing randomly, so we don't have two of the same light rays. This is awesome. So we're pretty much finished. Look at that. We have some pretty sweet light rays. Now we do want it kind of interacting with the forest a little more, maybe making it go make some of these light rays go behind some of these trees and everything. I'll go ahead and turn off the mats for now. Um, so we don't want all these light rays like going in front of the trees and everything. So what I'm gonna do is introduce to you guys this really really cool technique I thought of about five seconds ago in fact I didn't plan this tutorial to go this way but it just popped in my head and this is gonna be awesome I can't believe I've never thought of this before check this out I'm pretty sure this is gonna work let's try this let's call this um, Matt okay and we wanna find one of these light rays that needs to go behind like this tree or this tree something like that so mm, Maybe this light ray, alright? This light ray needs to go behind both of these trees. This tree and this tree. So there's kind of a problem because we can't use a track mat for two mats, right? A track mats only work for the layer above itself. It can't like work for multiple layers. But 
hopefully this technique I just thought of will work. Let's see. What we'll do is create a new solid, but okay, I need to change the size of it so it fits this comp. So make comp size like that. And what I would do is put a set mat effect. Ooh, maybe you guys get what I'm doing. So put a set mat set mat effect here, and then we'll just choose one of these um, mats here. So we'll do curved tree. Look at that, pretty sweet. And uh, what I'll do is actually duplicate this set mat effect and choose another uh, mat, maybe the middle tree here. Okay, so apparently it's not working because we have two set mat effects. But what we'll do is just hit invert mat both times, and boom. So it looks kind of weird, but what we're going to do is we call this two tree mat. So, and then what we're going to do, this is where the moment of glory is. We're going to go to the track mat of this layer and do, do alpha mat, because we only want this light ray to exist where the white solid is. So do this alpha mat. Boom. So, oh man, I can't believe I just thought, I mean, for as long as I've been doing After Effects, I never thought of this idea. What we can do is create a solid and apply as many set mat effects as we want to the solid and then use a track mat. So, oh, phew, this is just blowing my mind. Um, but we do want all of these elements to go behind this large, uh, this, this close tree here in the front. Um, so here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab the camera and all of these light rays all of these light rays and also we gotta copy the um, these two trees we use for the set mat so um, mid tree and the curved tree and we'll pre-compose these all together so pre-compose move all attributes okay there's a little issue here we need to change the blending mode back to screen since it's in a different composition it can't screen uh, you know um, to its parent composition so we need to turn this whole composition to screen and let's call these light rays and what we can do is just maybe put a set mat effect on this light, these light rays. Take mat layer from close tree. Boom. Uh, but it only exists where the tree is, so we need to invert this mat. Just like okay, just like that. So before, after, just like that. Sweet. And I do also want to put this girl here in front of the light rays, so that you know we have correct 3D, you know, geometry here. You know, we want to stick to the laws of physics as much as possible. So we'll do another set mat effect. We'll choose the girl and we'll do invert mat. Boom. So, you know, the girl's now in front of the light rays. Man, that is looking so cool. So let's say at this point it looks really cool, but you want to add another light ray. So it's kind of an issue since these light rays are already pre-composed. So what you can do here is go inside this composition, but uh, we can't see the footage. It's kind of a problem. So what we're going to do is copy the footage, hit control C. Let's go in these light rays. Hit Control V. So we paste the footage here, but there's kind of an issue. We don't we don't really want it to show. Um, yeah, it's screened on. So what we're gonna do is right click on this footage layer here in the light rays composition, and we'll do guide layer. So it's just a guide layer. It doesn't really exist. It just shows while we're working here. But when we go back to the previous composition, boom, everything's fixed. So yeah, um, let's go ahead and let's say we want to add another light ray. So what we'll do, maybe we'll add one kind of coming down through here. So what we'll do is just duplicate one of these light rays. And we'll just kind of move it like right here, something like that. Okie dokie. And we want to put it behind this curved tree layer. So I'll just duplicate this mat here. Drag it down to that um, that new light ray I created. And we'll for the set mat, we'll choose curved tree. Yeah, just like that. Just like the other one. And we'll turn the track mat of this light ray to alpha mat. Boom, so it only exists behind that tree. Awesome. And also, what we can do is double click on the set mat effect and turn down the opacity of this effect in the compositing options. We can make it be behind this tree as much as we want, so maybe even like 50%. So it only it's only halfway behind the tree. You know, this is people can't really tell, you know, just light rays. So we'll do like 75. Sweet, man, sweet. I, this is like the the best tutorial I've ever created. I just I just feel so good tonight. It's like in the middle of the night, by the way. I need to go to bed so bad. All right, um, but we gotta create this tutorial. I'm just I'm too excited to go to bed. You know what I'm saying? This is too exciting stuff. All right, so um, we're pretty much finished. This is all the techniques. You guys know all these light ray techniques now. I'm um, giving away all my secrets. You guys are gonna become better visual effects artists than I am. Man, why am I even making these tutorials? It's so awesome. I gotta, gotta show you guys these techniques, man. Even though I'm giving away all my secrets. Um, they're looking a little sharp. A little too, like, too artificial or something. You know, I don't know. I can't find the word. But what we're gonna do is apply a, a fast blur to these um, layers. And just blur it like 15 pixels. And then we'll choose repeat edge pixels. So we don't have any of these edge problems. 
And uh, what we'll do is just turn down the opacity of this fast blur, so maybe like 65% opacity in the compositing options. Okay, so it just kind of blurs it out a little bit, blurs it out a little bit, and makes these light rays look a little more uh, natural. And remember, we also have this fast blur before the set matte effect, so we don't blur the edges of these trees and stuff. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up how we created the light rays. Looks really cool. Let's go ahead and turn on our grade because this grade, man. This is the most juicy grade I've ever seen. Oh, pff, dang, that's good. It's a little too bright, though. By the way, if you're wondering how in the world my grade is a composition, well, then, we have this raster... What's that button called? We have this continuously rasterized button on here, so these there's some adjustment layers inside of this composition, and they're actually... Since this rasterization button is on, it's actually transferring through the composition into the parent composition actually maybe you guys get what I'm talking about but I'm not explaining this very well apparently so these adjustment layers inside of this composition are actually affecting the, this, this parent composition because this rasterization buttons on that's really cool man the sky is looking a little too bright though I mean it does explain why she's having such a blissful time though that pretty much wraps up these light rays effect it's really cool I've had a lot of fun today I'm not sure why I've had so much fun today but darn all those techniques man just so fun you probably wouldn't want to stop here with these light rays in the other tutorial we go over like how to add atmosphere to these light rays and we go over fog and stuff like that so usually you want to add like debris or fog into your light rays to give it texture to make it look a little more natural more blended or integrated into the environment like these light rays look a little too clean right now so yeah be sure to check out that tutorial I did over at actionvfx.com really cool so I guess that's all I really have to say it's been fun doing another tutorial with you guys this is Lyndon from Visionary Universe I hope to see you in the next tutorial make sure to subscribe leave a like if you're just a really good person so that's it <laughs> this was fun bye Oh, guys, guys, by the way, this Patreon page is the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life, all right? So, listen, if you guys really do have learned something from my YouTube channel and have really enjoyed these episodes we've, you know, gone through together, I'd really like if you consider just putting, just like, a small amount into this number here, right? Zero is not a very good number. It doesn't have to be much at all, like, one dollar. And we all know that I don't make episodes as much as I should, so you guys won't be, like, giving out that much money. If there's a number of people who kind of come together and just put a small amount of money into this it's really gonna help me out you know each time I create an episode to get that financial help it's cuz you know this this patreon thing is just the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life <laughs> so yeah if you really do appreciate like the hours and hours of work I've put in these tutorials please consider just putting a small amount of money yeah, and the first person who contributes me and you are gonna get along real well so I really really appreciate anyone who uh, takes you know the amount of time to contribute something to this patreon page anyway it's been really fun. Thank you for listening. See you next time.